That's truly what it is. For he's calling me to lay aside my selfishness and pride. So he can mold my heart and make it more like his. And lately I've been seeking more each day. The wisdom man who wants of his grace just as I am I run to him and mercy took me in just as I am and he forgave my sin all the way he's changing my heart proves that he loves me too much to leave me just as of his word to keep shaping who I am because I know that he does all things perfectly so all my thoughts and all my attitudes they're all his to change as he wants to just as I am I run to him and mercy took me in just as I am and he forgave my sin all the way he's changing my heart proves that he loves me too much to leave me just as I am just as I one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. O Lamb of God, I come just as I am. I run to him and mercy took me in just as I am. And he forgave my sin. All the way he changed my heart proves that he loves me too much to leave me just as I am, to leave me just as I am, just as I am. They lost it all. Oh, 
over the edge with no one there to break their fall. And what do you say to someone who feels so unloved, giving themselves away a little bit every day just to be good enough? And what do you say to a hopeless soul who can't remember their way home and everything is out of their control? There is no Jesus. There is no moment, there is no distance, there is no heartbreak He can take you through. So before you think that you're too lost to sing, remember there is nothing greater than grace. Jesus, there is no moment, there is no distance, there is no heartbreak He can take you through. So before you think that you're too lost to sing, remember there is nothing greater than grace.
Then the blessed Holy Spirit came to touch my heart and roll the stone away. All the glory of the living God broke through to the darkness of my tomb. And the love of the Father came and filled every corner of that room. Call 
costly or meek because we believe gold for his honor and frankincense for his pleasure and myrrh for the cross he'll suffer do you poured out their hearts to romance a world that has torn all apart how many fathers gave up their sons for me and only one did that for me
can my praises ever find it through years unnumbered on heaven's shore my song shall praise him forevermore blessed redeemer precious redeemer seems to see him on calvary chapter 11 verse 28 perhaps we could all quote these from memory tonight most of us these three verses come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden, well, that's light. Sure the Lord will bless our hearts, the reading of his most holy and precious word. 
Longfellow could take a worthless piece of paper and write a poem on it and be worth $5,000. That's a genius. Bill Gates could sign his name to a piece of paper and make it worth millions. That's capital. Uncle Sam could take gold or silver and stamp an eagle on it, and it's worth thousands of dollars. An artist can take a 50 cent piece of paper and paint a beautiful picture on it, and it's worth thousands. That's art. But friends tonight, God could take a worthless, sinful life and wash it in the blood of Jesus Christ and change that person completely and make him a blessing to all humanity. Folks, that's salvation. And only Jesus Christ can give it. No one else. It cannot be found in no other person or no other thing. Come unto me, the person. The person is no one else, as I just said, only the Lord Jesus who you could come to tonight to be saved. No one else. It's no one else. Only Jesus Christ alone that you could find this salvation. Ye that labor, the people. You see, that's every one of us tonight because we were lab in labor with our sin. The heavy load of sin. We'll look at that in a moment. He says, all you that labor, all you that carry this heavy load, you come. And then it says, I will give. Folks, that's a promise. That's a promise from God who cannot lie. He says, I'll give you rest. And then it says, take my yoke. That's the precept. That's the command. And then it says, I am meek and lowly. Folks, that's the pattern. If you can ever come to Christ, you've got to take that humble place and agree with God on who you are, a sinner, and turn from sin and ask for his forgiveness. And ye shall find rest. Folks, that's the product. <laughs> that's the product. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Friends, tonight, that's the proof. That's the proof. Tonight, with the rest of the time we got, I want to divide the first verse into three sections and then the last two verses into three more points. Perhaps we'll only look at the first three. We'll see. First, come. Something to do. Come unto me. Something to do. Second, something to receive. Rest. Thirdly, something to leave. Your burden of sin. We're going to look at those three. We'll see if we have time, perhaps another time, Lord willing. We'll look at, if we don't have time tonight, something to take, my yoke. Something to learn of me and something to find, rest. But let's look at the first three, perhaps as far as we'll get tonight. Come, something to do. You'll say, Freddie, I always heard there was nothing to do. Only come. That's what you must do, folks. You'll never receive the salvation if you don't come. You remember last week we were looking at Naaman. And Naaman says, I thought the prophet would come to me. No, salvation is you coming to God and confessing your sin. Come. It's interesting to note how God starts out the very first book of the Bible with an invitation. And he says, 
come. He tells Noah, come thou and all thine house into the ark. God wants you to come and be safe for time and for eternity. And you come to the very first book in the New Testament. And God's giving out invitation again. The Lord Jesus himself is giving it out. And he says, come unto me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. And the Bible doesn't close. You see, the first book in the, in the Bible, the first book in the New Testament, the last book of the Bible, the last chapter of the Bible, and almost the last verse, God gives the invitation again. And he says, the spirit and the bride say come. Uh, the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit is pleading with you to come still. Come and take of the water of life freely. And he, and he wants to give you living water tonight. Water that you'll never ever thirst again. But you must come. You must be willing to come. You see, it's consequences when you don't come. When you don't listen to God, it's consequences. Look at what happened to all those people in Noah's day. They perished in the flood. Friends, tonight, listen as I speak solemnly to you. If you fail to come to trust Jesus Christ, you will perish in God's judgment and be banished from his presence forever and forever. That's sad. Folks, you don't have to. The whole Bible is giving you an invitation to come, to come and find rest. We used to sing a little chorus. I, I'm always going back to these old choruses in Sunday school. I, I don't know if it's a sign of Alzheimer's or not, but anyhow. C-O-M-E, come. That's all he asks of me. You remember that? He did all the work. That's not to do for me. <laughs> there in Calvary's cross, he died for all my sin. And all he asks of me and you and you to do tonight is C-O-M-E, come. I could picture Brother Asiel Pender right now, dear brother, home with the Lord many years. His son's here tonight, really. And I was in his presence once when he was doing an acrostic with his little word, C-O-M-E, come. With some tourist. You know, that was his livelihood taking out tourists, fishing and around to Arbor Island. And he always witnessed. And this is the acrostic. The first letter in come is C. And he says, look, it's for the children, boys and girls. It's for you to come tonight. Then he would go on to say, you know, oh, it's for the older folk. And folks, it's some older folk Right, and right in our community who still need to come for salvation tonight, I pray for them every day. It's many in our world tonight are uh, up in years and they haven't yet come to know the Lord Jesus as their Savior. You must come. C-O-M. For the middle age. You see, even the middle age got to come. And it's some tonight might be even here in our gathering. Maybe you are a Christian, but you're away from the Lord. You know it. You know it's things in your life you need to get right. Look, you could come tonight. It says, if we come, he's faithful. He's just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You could come. See for the children, all for the older folk, and for the middle age. And he, everybody, everybody, folks, that doesn't leave anyone out, all must come if you're going to receive Christ's salvation. Come means to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I think I said here the last gospel message. Many people have difficulty believing uh, not knowing what to believe means. 
But I think when a person realizes they're lost, they're helpless, they're hopeless, and they're outbound, I think you'll know exactly what it means to believe because there's nothing else left to do but believe and to come to him. A second point, come, something to receive. Rest, the rest of salvation. Do you notice he says, I'll give it to you? Did you notice tonight that it's free? That you can't work for it? You can't earn it? It's unmerited? He says, look, I'll give it to you tonight. What it means tonight to have rest from your conscience, to know that you could lie down in your pillow tonight, no matter what. Absent from the body, if you was to die, would be present with the Lord. Folks, that's rest. That's peace. You could know that tonight, the rest of conscience and the rest tonight, to know that the penalty of sin has been moved away. God has now cleared your account, and he counts you righteous tonight. Folks, that's something to receive. And, you know, as I'm witnessing up in the Lutheran giving out Bibles, I guess 50% of the people will say, I'm working on it, I'm trying, I'm trying. And I, I, I tell them, look, I just give you a Bible. What do you do to, to get that Bible? I just reached out and took it. Folks, that's salvation. Simple as that. You reach out in faith, believing God what he says, and trusting him and him alone to save you. And you could have it tonight. You could have that rest that he alone can give. John 6, 35 says, Him that cometh to me shall never hunger. Friends, tonight you'll find he's enough to satisfy your spiritual soul forever. And he says this, to all, him that cometh unto me will never thirst again. Folks, you'll find that it can supply that spiritual thirst, that longing in your heart tonight. You must come. Brings me to my last point on the, on the salvation. Come. I want to spend a little bit more time here on this tonight. Come is something to leave. You say, what am I to leave? Your burden of sin. Ye who are heavy and burdened, you who are overburdened with your sin. Folks, you believe sin is heavy? You believe sin will drag you down? Walk in our community. Look at the drug addict. Look at the alcoholic. If you don't believe that sin is a heavy burden. Look at the world. Look at the news tonight. Sin is a heavy burden. Lord said, look, I want to take that heavy burden that you're carrying and give you rest. Today, as I pulled out of the food fair parking lot, I saw two tour tourists walking. Each one had two heavy bags of groceries walking, going towards the marina. And I asked them if they would like a ride. Oh, they said, you sa almost saved our life. You almost saved our life. We didn't know if we were going to make it to that boat because they were up in years. They thanked me over and over. Folks, that's just taking a burden for a few minutes off of some people. Jesus Christ wants to take that burden of sin from you forever and give you rest tonight. A rest that you could only, as I said, find in him and him alone. Are you willing to receive it? Or you'll go out here tonight saying no to him. See, comes means to confess our sin. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. See, we must confess that we are sinners. Come means to enter a door. The Lord Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Folks, Christ is the door. The only door to heaven. Heaven's got one door. One door and only one. 
and yet its sides are two? Inside and outside, which side are you and you? Folks, I could tell you I'm on the inside. I trust you are inside too. If not, you could be if you come through Jesus Christ and him alone tonight. Come as thou enter the door. Christ is that door. Come means to open the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Who is the Savior at the door tonight knocking? Who is he? Let me tell you tonight, he's a present Savior because he's at your heart's door right here tonight knocking and wants entrance. Will you let him in? Who is the Savior? He's a waiting Savior. Listen, he says, I stand at your heart's door. You know, if I go to someone's door and I knock, I might wait two minutes and I leave. How many years has our Savior, the Lord Jesus, been knocking at your door? Knocking, knocking. Folks, it shows that he's loving. It shows that he's patient tonight. But what if he leaves and doesn't return anymore? Friends, that would be said. I've read many stories where the Spirit of God has left the person alone and never given him an opportunity to be saved. He's standing. He's knocking. He's waiting for you to open it. He's a present Savior. He's a waiting Savior. But he's a seeking Savior because he's knocking at your heart's door. For the Son of Man has come to seek. And to save that which was lost. Folks, that's why he left heaven, like they said. That's why he left that throne. That's why he went to the cross. That me and you could be saved tonight. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. He's a present Savior. He's a waiting Savior. He's a seeking Savior. And folks, you know what? He's a promising Savior. He says, I'll come in. He says, if you open your heart's door, I'll come in. And God who cannot lie says, he'll come in. Will you let him in tonight? No longer keeping him on the outside. And he's a providing Savior. He says, look, I'll sup with you. And he's a fellowshipping Savior. And you and me together. Oh, to have that fellowship. Oh, to know tonight. The joy alone of sins forgiven. You might say, well, Freddie, I got plenty of time to think about this. I'm still young. I'm still middle-aged. Still got my help. I'm going to close with this. Listen. Someone has said, youth, too happy to think. Plenty of time. Look, young people, you might be here tonight. And everything seems to be going your way. It's too happy. Look, Mr. Freddy, I could, I'm going to do this down the road. I've had many people tell me that. But look, I'm too young to even think about what you said tonight. Later on. Well, it says manhood. Too busy to think. See, because we're seeking to, to make a livelihood now and, and, and to provide for the family. So we're too busy to even think about those things now. How about the prime of life? Too anxious to think. You see, worry has taken over. Your health, your, your children, and now you don't even think about those things I've been talking about tonight, salvation. How about declining years? Too old to think now, because now your heart is hardened, and you're, you're too old to even think about it. How about your dying bed? Well, friends, it's too ill to think about it. You might be even got Alzheimer's or something. You can't even think about it. Well, how about death? You see, folks, it's too late to think then. It's too late to think. 
but one more tonight. How about eternity? Friends, forever to think about what I said tonight. It will go over and over and over in your mind. I should have come. I should have accepted the Savior. I played the fool and put him off. Forever to think of your opportunities you had and missed it in torment forever. Oh, I pray tonight that would be no one here listening. And folks, if you're not sure tonight, young, middle-aged, and old alike, will at seminar arts and know that we are sure that heaven is our own. Let's pray. Father, we realize tonight that we cannot create one anxious thought in one single person's mind here tonight, but your spirit can. He's the one who convicts. He's the one who convinces man of sin and judgment. Father, we pray tonight that he would be so convicted. If it's one person here tonight still in their sin, they would not leave until they come and find their salvation and find rest in their souls. We ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. If you have done it, you just made that prayer true for the first time tonight. Tell us at the door. We'd love to rejoice with you. Good night. May God bless you.